buy it, you can rent it if you want it But you can't afford that either, so yeah, let me change the topic You ain't going nowhere, with nothing in your pocket Hi guys, it is Unders. Today we're having a look at FabFilter Pro Q2 because it has had a nice little update recently. Now, if you guys find these sorts of videos helpful, please pop a subscribe to the channel, pop a like on the video. It helps me out massively in creating more content for you guys. Now, if you're already using Pro Q2, what's significant about this update is it makes adjustments to the analyzer and the match EQ functionality. Um, and a couple of great little features that have been introduced and enhanced that sort of were already present, but now you can use them in a slightly different way. Those of you that haven't used Pro Q2, this is probably one of the best EQs out there. I suggest you go and do a little bit of research. There is a link in the description below where you can grab a free demo of it as well. So let's just sync right into this. What is effectively going on is this plugin has its own frequency analysis system, okay? by which it is all going to be down here. Now, if we press play on this track, we're going to be able to see uh, what is going on inside Pro-Q via frequency analysis. Now we've got pre, post and SC. Pre is the audio as it comes in, post is after the EQ has taken effect and SC is the sidechain functionality. All of those are going to be uh, key things we can use in this, but for simplicity right now, I'm just going to turn post on. Now something to take note of, everything I'm going to talk about is affected by the tilt functionality here. Now by default it's set to 4.5. This adjusts the spectrum so you can have a, a better understanding of how you are hearing what's going on. Strictly 0 dB per octave is how it should be. That is exactly how the audio sounds. The tilt works with sort of the logarithmic system your ears work with and gives a better perception. You need to make sure when you do any of these captures and edits that you have used the same tilt functionality on the EQ previously and haven't adjusted that. The resolution also affects it. So I've got it on high, I haven't got it on max because this uh, track's pretty busy. You can see even idle right now, it's using about half of my CPU. Um, as well as speed, medium's a nicer way to take it in, but you can go very slow, very fast. That is a complete preference. That will not necessarily affect what we're doing here. The tilt one is the one to really play on and make sure you always have it set to the same thing when you're working in these areas. Okay, so we are gonna have just post on and hit play and we can see what's going on in the track. No need to buy it, you can rent it if you want it, but you can't afford that either, so yeah, let me change the topic. You Cool, so what you've always been able to do in FabFilter, if you hold over the spectrum, it would highlight it and show you what's going on. It would do that, it would change purple. No need to buy it, you can rent it if you want it, but you can't afford that either, so yeah, let me change the topic. You ain't going nowhere, with nothing in your pocket, trying to escape. Cool, so it gives you your spectrum over time there. Now I let that just run through here, because I wanted this little spike to show up, so it's just degraded off there, okay? What we can do now, if we, select that and we click and hold it it will turn blue and once it turns blue we can edit it so that will then edit the eq based upon the spectrum let me show you no need to buy it you can rent it if you want it but you can't afford that either so yeah let me change the topic you ain't going nowhere with nothing in your pocket trying to escape this mad place where the room is full of vomit and fab so now that's going to stay there we've clicked we held on it went from purple to blue we are now able to edit this spectrum and you'll see if I run my mouse across it gives us EQ points to create based on this spectrum. Now this little spike here is popping right, we can really hear it's part of the uh, tambourine when that comes in, it's the first hit of the tambourine, it's got a big transient on and it's getting in there. Now I could go into the tambourine and affect that but for demonstration purposes this is great because this snaps right to the top of that, I can click on it and drag it down and bring it back in line with everything else. Now if I wanted to do that just on the tambourine track, it's gonna have a lot less effect, but obviously for demonstration purposes, this is a good way to go. And that has got exactly that frequency, exactly that point, and dropped it down just as I wanted it to. I can now just click away, and just have that as we had it previously, and I could narrow that cue down even more by just dragging on my magic mouse here. And you see we've got just over six decibels of reduction in that point. And now when we play. No need to buy it, you can rent it if you want it. But you can't afford that either, so yeah, let me change the topic. You ain't going nowhere, with nothing in your pocket. Trying to escape this mad place where the room is full of vomit. Boom, 
perfectly suppressed that little frequency spectrum that was jumping up in that point. Now, like I said, you'd want to go and do it on the individual tracks, but for demo purposes, this is perfect. Now, equally, we can hear that particular frequency area. Isn't that just lovely? But that's just also really useful for finding key areas of a, of a sound and a good way to use it. You can just drag that around with that on there. Like a suicide rock. So the other feature that's been introduced, again, is down within the analyzer. Let's get rid of this. Down within the analyzer. So if we go EQ match, we can now grab a reference of a track. Now previously we could use a sidechain reference and we could put a sign chain in and then we could adjust that based on our music. However, say I really, really like this mix that I've done and I want to keep that profile and I'm mixing another track and I want it to have a similar sound, which I could actually do. I'm mixing a whole project here. So I've got four tracks at the moment that I all want to be part of one project. Let's say this is going to be my guide. I can capture the profile of it and bring that into other projects and go, ah, right, okay, I push the kick a lot more here and I can have a look at that. So what we can do, if I play, we've got input here, which lets us grab the input. And what we can then do is save that as a reference spectrum. Now what I've done here is I've saved a couple. I've got Plastic, which is um, Plastic World from Pendulum, Rent, which is this track, and Still Dre, which is probably one of the best sounding hip hop tracks ever made. We can then save those and apply them to the track. So I've already done that with this. You would just click save and save. Great. Not necessarily something we need to particularly walk you through. Now, what we can also do is now apply the Still Dre one to this one. So we need to unpause that. And what we're going to do here is capture a good point of the input. I'm going to match that. And that has put a horrendous amount of a uh, top end on so we can adjust for that knowing that we don't want all that sub we could just flatten that off what this has done now is grabbed the profile top end of the still dre track and applied that to my track no need to buy it you can rent it if you want it but you can't afford that either so yeah let me change the topic you ain't going nowhere now it's pushing way too hard and uh we know that the still dre track would have been mastered and this is a mixing stage but it gives us an idea of what we're doing. So there's a huge boost going on around here and it makes a huge difference on, so on the kick. There's this little bit here, which is making quite a big difference on the snare. And we can listen to those individual areas. Yeah, I probably wouldn't boost that in this track. Yeah, that's giving us that real low like, subby kick sound right around, what are we? Yeah, just around the 110 mark, which is right where my kick's sitting as well. So it's boosting that load. I actually quite like that bit. Now, equally, it's given a really big push to the overall top end. You saw it gave a huge boost to the sub as well. That is just the mastering stage of bits coming in. We could, when we take the profile of these tracks, reduce it down in volume. Um, say by 9 dB, that might give us more of a, an acceptable way of boosting it, but this gives us a good idea and profile sound of what we're going. More importantly, I can take my track and put that into place as well. So we can take the input again. No need to buy it, you can rent it if you want it, but you can't afford that either, so yeah, let me change the topic. You ain't going nowhere, but nothing in your pocket. Trying to escape this mad place where the road is full of vomit, and it stinks like a sewer, see the grass. They want the other side, another day, another dollar. Don't want to hear another line, just want to run and hide. Makes the bread, I wonder if they'll ever really run it. And now I've got a blend of a different part of this mix and the Dre thing going on. And that's really affected the EQ as well. And we can A-B these by, by turning it off and hear the difference it's making. It's obviously getting quite a lot louder in the top end.
you know what it's made me aware of how much more the kit could be brought out and how much extra that gives to the track and that is exactly what we're using this for it's a learning tool for it for that's how i'm going to use it it's a learning tool for me to grab different parts of mixes and be able to really hear what's going on with them and also look for those spikes and be able to adjust that sound profile by clicking and grabbing the audio spectrum. So that is the update that has happened in FabFilter Pro Q. I hope the video has been helpful for you guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye bye now.